Hey everyone, it's Adam. I'm the editor at The Fifth Person. So if you haven't checked out our website at fifthperson.com, you can always go there and check out our free articles and resources on how you can invest better and make you know more profitable investment decisions for yourself. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can invest in your 40s. So, you know, in your 40s is going to be very different from how you're going to manage your money and your investments in when you're in your 30s and your 20s because right now you're probably going to be at the peak of your career you might have you know children and you have a lot more commitments as well so how you're going to you know manage your money is going to be very very different so if you want to find out how you can invest in your 40s let's check out this video all right so how to invest in your 40s all right so in your 40s you're probably going to be at the peak of your career or you know on an upward trajectory and you're making a lot more income as well you probably have a family with you know children that are you know a lot more grown up and you have to take care of them so you have a lot more commitments maybe you have a bigger house you have a car it's at this stage in life where you have a lot of things going for you you're making more money but you're spending a lot more money as well so how are you going to invest you know and manage your finances is going to be very important at this point in time all right so the first thing I want to do when if you're in your 40s is that you want to save at least 20 to 25 percent of your income you know saving doesn't change whether in your 30s or 20s or 50s you know you always want to save money because if you don't save you cannot invest you always need to set aside something to make sure you have something to grow all right so even in your 40s make sure you're saving money so i recommend at least 25 percent if you can save more even better all right so just to give you an example maybe let's just say your monthly salary is eight thousand dollars and you have all these expenses right now you have your mortgage your, your food and household your transport entertainment you know and, and anything else so you maybe spend about six thousand dollars a month all right so like i said your commitments are going to be a lot higher as well but if you're able to save you know 20 to 25 percent it can still build up to quite a bit so in this example you'll be saving two thousand dollars a month put that aside it's going to go you know to somewhere you can set aside for a rainy day or for your investments all right so another thing is you want to make sure that you save at least 12 months worth of expenses so if anything happens to you you know touch wood you lose your job you go to the hospital you don't want stuff to, ha to happen to you you want to make sure that you know you at least have 12 months worth of expenses so that your family is going to be fine for the next 12 months you know and you know and you have enough time to get back on your feet or look for another job and make sure you know things are going to be okay all right so make sure you at least have 12 months worth of expenses now the other thing I want to point out is that you want to be you know beware of lifestyle inflation. You know when you're in you know when you get older and you're making more money, and you're more successful in your career, it's very natural to want to spend more money the more you make and the more you spend so this is something that happens it's very very common you want to celebrate you want to have a good time you know you start buying you know going on the holidays you know to fancier locations or you know you buy nicer cars and all that so i mean i'm not saying don't enjoy life you have to make sure that you enjoy life as well but you want to make sure you always spend within your means because if you're making a lot more money but you're spending you know just as much you're not getting anywhere it's, it's no different from being in your 20s and 30s so when you want to make sure that you know with the amount of income that you're making you're able to save even more even though you know you're saving 25 20 20 25 percent you're making you know, an absolute amount you're still saving a lot of money as well to set aside all right now the next thing you want to do is you also want to save for your children's education so this is a time when your kids are maybe at their 10 11 12 you know wherever they are and it's time to start thinking about where they're going to go you know when they, which college they want to go to which university you want to go and you know it can get really expensive so you want to make sure that you have set aside something to make sure that you know you provide for them as well and just to take a look at the you know the fees the tuition fees in singapore for university all right so this is a 2020 for NUS, it's about $24,000 for, you know, the entire course, a three-year course in, at the NUS. And for NTU, it's the same price. For SMU, it's slightly more expensive. It's about $34,000. Of course, if you go for the more, you know, expensive courses like medicine, it's going to cost you a lot more as well. So for NUS, it's going to cost you $144,000, okay? And of course, if your kid you know, happens to be a genius and then he can go all the way or he or she can go to Harvard University, it's Going to cost you a lot of money as well it's going to cost you more than two hundred thousand dollars in us dollars so if your kid ever plans to go overseas you really need to start planning and set aside money to make sure you know you help your kid you know you know achieve their dreams or give them a you know a good head start in life and you know all these fees are just for one kid okay so if you have two two kids or three kids this is going to get this is going to be multiplied with two or three so you want to make sure that you really set aside something you know and of course if you don't have any kids you know 
congratulations you didn't think about this but then you know if you do like i said set aside something start planning and save for your kids education now the next thing you want to do is you want to insure yourself now we're getting old and in your 40s you know things are gonna break here and there you know, make sure you take care of yourself and because you know at this point in your life you have kids you know dependents look you know uh, you have to look out for so you want to make sure that you insure yourself to take care of your family so there are three kinds of insurance major kinds that life in this life insurance you know something if you ever pass on or that's like um, tot or you suffer from total permanent disability you know you, you can claim life insurance and to make sure that your family is taken care of they have a sum of money to tide them over if you ever pass away all right you have health insurance which uh, takes care of your medical needs you know if you fall ill uh, this is what health insurance is for so you don't you know get you don't get hit with a massive bill if you ever fall ill your insurance will take care of that and there's general insurance which, which takes care of your mortgage your house you know fire your car these are things that you need as well and I think one insurance that it's really important is mortgage insurance so if anything happens the, the mortgage on your house is taken care of so your family will always have a roof over their head so make sure you consider this as well now the other thing is is that you want to pay off your debts first now before you even invest you know you have to save to set money aside to invest and you want to make sure that you pay off your debts first now i'm not saying you have to pay off all your debts so for example like your mortgage is something that you probably still want to keep you know it's something that you want to pay off immediately because the interest rates are relatively stable they're relatively low and i mean if you choose to pay it off it's your choice as well but you know what i'm talking about is that you want to pay off your very high interest debts like your credit card debt so for example if you take a look at this you know credit card debt can go as high as 25 5, 26% per annum. That is a lot of money. So instead of, you know, if you owe $10,000 in your credit card debt and you haven't cleared that, I would rather you pay this off before you take the money and invest in the stock market because it's not easy to make 25, 26% in the stock market consistently every single year. Not many people can do it. So it's much better to just pay off your debt, make sure you're debt free for your consumer debt, your high interest debt. And then when you clear that, and you're on more stable financial footing, then you start investing. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna to contribute to your CPF special account. So just to recap, your CPF special account pays you a 4% interest per annum, and this is risk-free. Now, the reason why you wanna you know, contribute to your CPF special account is number one, because it pays you a much higher interest at 4%, and because the full retirement sum increases every single year, as you can see here. So as of January 2020, for people who are retiring at 55, you know, this, the full retirement sum is $181,000 but this amount is going to grow every single year mainly because of inflation so by the time you retire you know in 20 years time or 15 years time this amount is going to be a lot bigger so you want to make sure that you know you have enough in your CPF to hit this amount and the best way is to contribute to your CPF special account because that pays you 4% interest risk-free every single year now what you can do is you can contribute you know up to seven thousand dollars a year voluntarily into your cps special account which helps to build up the amount in your special account which you know pays you you know four percent interest and over, over you know, 10 15 20 years this is going to compound you know and give you a big amount at the end of the end of the end of the day when you retire all right so make sure you do this as well you know especially if you haven't really contributed to your cpf maybe this is the time you need to start catching up you know uh, making up for lost time now the next thing that you want to really consider is that you want to start balancing your portfolio in your 40s all right you're going to be a lot older now uh, retirement is in sight in the next 15 20 years so you need to be a bit less aggressive when it comes to your portfolio all right so just to give you a spectrum over here on one side you have a very defensive you know portfolio which focuses on capital preservation or generating income through dividends and then on the other side you have you know an, a more aggressive portfolio which grows off goes after growth you know and capital appreciation and then of course where you lie on this scale really depends on your personality and of course your age as well so if you're in your 20s you have a lot more time to grow you can afford to take a lot more risk you can afford to be a bit more aggressive and of course if you're in your 60s or 50s you know you probably don't want to risk all the money that you have saved and invested over the years because you want to make sure that this money is for your retirement you have a nest egg that can take care of you you don't take any risks with that all right so uh, in your 40s, you're maybe somewhere around here. You can still afford to take a little bit of risk and go for growth, but at the same time, you want to start shifting down from being less aggressive than you were in your you know, 20s or 30s. All right. So 
just to share with you the rule of 100 this rule is about taking 100 less your age and then that gives you a figure and this is the amount you should allocate you know how much of your stocks or your assets in general should be in this defensive asset classes or stocks or you know and the rest of it in more aggressive stocks or asset classes all right so this again is a rule of thumb i mean some of you may be more aggressive or some of you may be you know more risk averse it's, it's really up to you but it's a rule of thumb and it's a very useful one you can use for yourself so in your 40s you may want to put a little bit more of your you know assets or your stocks in defensive stocks and assets all right so for example if you're in your 40s you might be somewhere here on the spectrum where you know you can still afford to go for some capital appreciation and growth because you're still relatively young and you still have some runway to go but at the same time you want to start shifting towards you know having a more balanced portfolio because you want to start thinking about you know, preserving your capital and making sure you have something you know you don't take too much risk risk with what you have left for your retirement all right so just to give you an example you could have um, 40 percent of your portfolio in dividend stocks or in REITs which pay you know a stable dividend or even in bonds and the rest of your portfolio could still be geared towards growth you know in sunrise industries which have a lot of potential in growth stocks which have you know some room to grow because they're smaller companies and they hold they see a lot of potential as well and of course in star wars you know you know more established companies uh, that are already very successful but they still have a long runway to grow as well all right, so this is just a rule of thumb where you might be on the spectrum really depends on you but you know as you approach in your 40s and your 50s you want to start balancing your portfolio and making sure you have you know enough capital that you preserve for your retirement now if you're looking for you know income you consider the Singapore and Hong Kong markets if you're you know because they have a very tax friendly environment for dividends but if you're looking for growth you might want to consider you know a market like the US where they have you know a huge domestic market and they are also you know companies that have global presence and they have some of the most innovative companies as well uh, that have a lot of growth in them okay another market could be China as well which if you're familiar with that market for yourself now the thing is if you ever want to you know pick your own stocks you want to make sure that you have a process which allows you to pick the best stocks for yourself so you want to make sure you're able to find investment ideas and you run them through a system which allows you to evaluate and analyze you know which stocks are the best in class for your portfolio so you want to go through something like the investment quadrant that we have which you know goes through the business the management financials and valuation of a stock before you consider putting it on a watch list and then waiting for the right price to enter before you add it to your portfolio so over the long term the goal is to make sure that you build a portfolio you know of high quality businesses that you can own for the long term as well now another thing you can do is that you can consider diversifying with etfs all right so besides just picking stocks for yourself you can also invest in ETFs, which gives you instant diversification so what is an etf so an etf is kind of like a basket of stocks so you have stock a b c d and e you put them all together into something like a stock index and then that's kind of like a basket of stocks and this stock index is something that an ETF can follow or track all right so in America one of the most famous you know stock indices is the S&P 500 and the biggest uh, ETF that tracks the S&P 500 is called the Spider S&P 500 ETF Trust all right so if you take a look at you know some of the companies that the S&P 500 has you have famous names like Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook and all the other big names over here. So if you want to invest in the S&P 500, you don't have to invest in you know all 500 different companies all by yourself. That's going to be a huge undertaking. And you know what you can do instead is just invest in the S&P 500 ETF. You just need to buy that one ETF which allows you instant diversification into 500 of the best US companies, all right? So, if you take a look at the performance of the S&P 500 ETF since its inception in 1993 it has given an annualized return on average of 9.44%, which is very, very, very decent. All right. Now, if you you know want to consider something you know in Singapore, you can also consider something like the Lion Philip S3 ETF. So, for example, if you're interested in Singapore REITs but you don't know which particular REIT you want to go out for and you just want to diversify across you know most of the REITs in Singapore, you can consider something like this. All right. So, if you take a look at the holdings of the Lion Philip S3 ETF, they have holdings like Maple Tree Industrial Trust, they have Ascendus REIT, Capital DC REIT, 
the Capital Land REITs and the Maple Tree REITs as well. So they have 28 REITs in this particular ETF. So if you just buy this one ETF, you're diversified across 28 REITs in Singapore. This is not a recommendation to buy or sell anything here, but this is something you can consider if you just want to you know, diversify immediately across all the REITs in Singapore. All right, so just take a look at the performance. It's a very young REIT. It only like uh, came about you know, in 2017 or 2018. There's no long-term track record at this point, but if you take a look at the 2019 performance, REITs did really well in Singapore in that particular year. So it grew 25.6% on average in 2019. So if you want to consider this, you can have a look at it yourself as well. Now, the, the last thing you want to do is you want to start planning for your retirement. So in your 40s, it's, you're probably going to start thinking of this if you haven't done so already. All right. So as a 40 year old, you probably want to retire in, you know, when you're 65. That's 25 years of your career left. The amount of years you're still going to generate an income or a salary for yourself. So you want to make sure you have the best, you need to make the best of it before you call it the day all right so if you're able like i said in this example in, in this video in an example earlier on if you're able to save two thousand dollars a month and invest it at nine percent per annum which is the you know the average analyzed return of the s p 500 which i think is very decent and you know and very achievable this over 25 years this will grow to two million dollars all right so this is something that if you're going to plan for retirement and you're thinking about how you can save you know a million dollars or two i'm showing you with the math that it is very very possible but only if you stick to it all right you're willing to set aside money save it invest it very prudently over the next 20 to 25 years until your retirement and when you get there you will have something left over by the time you retire all right and of course you can afford to save more you will have more at the end of the day as well so just to summarize you know all eight steps you know, about how to manage your finances and invest in your 40s number one you want to make sure that you save money because if you don't save you cannot invest all right you want to make sure that you save some for your kids education as well because you know university can get really expensive and you want to make sure that you set aside something for them make sure you insure yourself you're getting old uh, you know we're all getting old and you want to make sure that if anything happens to you, your family is taken care of again pay off all your debts because you know credit card debts are some of the highest interest rates out there and it's much better to pay the debt off rather than try you know to take the money and you know make a return in the stock market if you have so much debt all right continue to contribute to your cpf special account because that pays you four percent interest risk-free and that can compound quite a bit by the time you retire you want to start to balance your portfolio as you hit your 40s and your 50s because you know you don't want to take on too much risk and you, you know, retirement is coming in sight so you make sure that you preserve some of your capital you can always diversify with ETFs if you don't always want to you know, pick your own stocks you can always consider using ETFs and of course you can start planning for your retirement have a you know financial target at the end of the day when you hit 65 so that you know you have something to look forward to in your golden years all right I really hope you like this video and you learned something really useful about how you can manage your finances and your investments in your 40s so if you really like this video you know hit the like button share this video with your friends especially those who are still in their 40s or going to hit their 40s and of course subscribe to this channel because you know we want to make sure that you know every new video that we send out to you hits you as fresh as they come so once again if you really like this thank you so much for watching this my name is adam and we're all from the fifth person so we'll see you around